So uh, welcome back to the conference. It's a pleasure uh, to give the word to uh, uh, Denis Oru from UC Berkeley. He's a prominent uh, symplectic geometer and working in symplectic topology with fundamental contributions. And in fact, his talk has the title Speculations about Homological Mirror Symmetry for Affine Hypersurfaces. Uh, he's got a number of uh, honors, uh, including uh, Pripeco, being invited speaker at the International Congress of Mathematicians. He got a master that he was a teenager. He went on to a brilliant career. And um, OK, so let me uh, give the word to him. And uh... OK, thank you very much for the introduction. And it's a pleasure to be here. It's an honor to speak in this conference, as always. Um, so we're going to change topics a bit compared to many of the other talks. And I want to try to give you an introduction to some recent development in what's called mirror symmetry, um, starting with some examples that are going to be reasonably concrete, but ending with things that are completely speculative and actually I cannot prove, but the goal is actually to state a new conjecture. So in general, mirror symmetry is the belief that symplectic geometry and algebraic geometry are essentially the same thing. As long as you do them on different spaces called mirror pairs of spaces. And so in the formulation that I'm interested in called homological mirror symmetry, the key objects of study in symplectic geometry are Lagrangian submanifolds of a symplectic manifold. And these are organized in something called the Fukaya category that I will try to give you an introduction to. And so Konsevich's homological mirror symmetry conjecture says that Lagrangian submanifolds on a given symplectic manifold should correspond roughly to coherent sheaves on the mirror space or the key object is the derived category. Okay. So, oops. so the class of spaces that mirror symmetry can apply to has been extended steadily over the years. And initially, this was a statement about compact Calabi-Yau projective varieties. And well, now there's no clear limits anymore to what we can do. Okay, so the class of spaces that I want to look at today are hypersurfaces in affine space. And you can think of those as useful building blocks for things like pairs of pants decompositions and so on. I'm going to just focus on their geometry in their own right, but you may also be interested in, say, compactifying them to hypersurfaces in toric varieties. So the general class of mirrors to hypersurfaces in C star to the N are sometimes called toric Calabi-Yau landau ginzburg models, and I will explain what that means pretty soon. So let me just state the general construction of mirror pairs, and then I will illustrate it in a couple of examples, because the definition is probably going to be just too much to process right now. So let's say that I have a hypersurface defined by some Laurent polynomial in n variables, which might be a sum, finite sum, over a set of weights which is a finite subset of Z to the N, of, well, there's some coefficient, there's some extra parameter, T, that I will take some powers of. And of course, now the thing you expect in Laurent polynomials, a monomial in the variables X1 to Xn. And, well, set this equal to zero, this defines a hypersurface in C star to the N. We are going to assume that it's smooth, And we are going to think of a limit where t goes to zero as a numerical parameter. This is sometimes called going near the tropical limit 
because if you project such a thing under the logarithm map, then the large-scale geometry becomes apparent, and you really see a combinatorial structure indexed by which powers of t dominate in, I mean, basically expanding things into powers of t becomes the relevant thing to think about. So, in fact, let me introduce right now so-called tropicalization of f. It's a piecewise linear function obtained just by replacing every multiplication by addition and addition by max. So for me, this will be a piecewise linear function which is defined by the maximum over this finite index set alpha of the affine functions given by, well, alpha scalar product with xi, the variable, minus rho of alpha. Okay, so this is the tropicalization. And let me just finish definitions before I do pictures. So now what we're going to do is define a polytope, which is going to be everything that lives over the graph of this tropicalization. I should say. So it's a polytope in Rn plus one, defined by the last coordinate eta is greater or equal than the value of phi. And so this is a convex unbounded polytope. And so this defines a toric variety, non-compact. And there's a distinguished toric monomial which is the monomial with exponent 0, 0, 0, 1 on y. And the statement, which I will have to clarify because it means nothing to you right now, is that the mirror space to the hypersurface H is the pair y, w, by which we mean mostly we'll be looking at the geometry not just of Y, but also of the zero set of W, which is the union, so let's call it Z, the zero set of W. So this is a capital Z, this is a little Z, sorry for the handwriting. This is the union of all the toric divisors in Y. So this is a singular space obtained as a union of toric varieties. Yes? Mm-hmm. No, they're both non-compact. Why, this is gonna be a non-compact. So these spaces are both non-compact. Okay, so let me do an example so that you know, you'll see what this says concretely. So, the example that I want to think about is let's say that I take so there's something called pairs of pants, which in dimension one just look like, well, what you know. And there's a higher dimensional generalization, uh, which is just the complement of a linear hyperplane in C star to the N. So the pair of pants of dimension N minus one is going to be the hypersurface defined by x1 plus, plus xn plus one equals zero inside c star to the n. So this is, for example, the one-dimensional pair of pants, which is defined by the equation one plus x1 plus x2 equals zero in c star squared. Okay, and you can check this is indeed the usual pair of pants because you can project, say, to the x1 variable and x1 has to be non-zero because it's in C star, and it also has to be different from negative one because otherwise x2 would be zero. So this is C star with 
the point minus one removed. Okay? Or this is also a sphere minus three points. So the construction that we have in this case says, well, phi will be the max of xi1 dot 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 xn and zero. And the graph of phi now has domains of linearity that look like this. You can see that the locus where the maximum is not, where this function is not smooth, is what's called the tropical version of a pair of pants. It's some sort of combinatorial abstraction of what the pair of pants looks like. And, but let's ignore that. And the mirror space in this case, so now you have to imagine everything that lives over the graph of this function. This is gonna be a solid in space with three faces, one here, one here, one here. This is congruent to a standard octant. So in fact, the mirror will just be C cubed. In general, you'll get C to the n plus one, and using the standard coordinates on C to the n plus one, the function W will be minus the product of all the coordinates. So in particular, Z will be the union of the coordinate hyperplanes. Okay? So, so this is our playground. And the statement of mirror symmetry now comes twofold. One is that coherent sheaves on, say, the pair of pants, or in general on H, should correspond to a certain Foucault category of the pair YW. And this is the subject of, well, this is basically proved in work in progress with Mohammed Abu Zaid, which is not what I want to talk about today. Instead, I want to talk about the other direction of mirror symmetry, which relates instead the Fouquet category of H to the algebraic geometry of Y, W. And the relevant object here is something particularly evil, so we'll have to develop intuition, defined by Orloff, called the derived category of singularities. So what you're supposed to do is you look at coherent sheaves on Z, which is this union of toric strata in this toric variety Y, but you want to discard anything that looks like a vector bundle, which is bad news for differential geometers, right? Because as differential geometer, I learned, oh, you know, bundles, okay, we're happy with, and sheaves, well, this is this weird thing, but, you know, locally they look like co-kernels of maps of bundles and so on. Um, so, basically, there's a construction called the categorical quotient, which takes coherent sheaves and discards everything that is globally a vector bundle or a complex of vector bundles. And so, this is meant to measure exactly how singular this space is. This is uh, somehow a more modern version of classical singularity theory, it tells you how singular Z is. And as you can see from the examples, in our case, Z is basically singular because it's a union of smooth components intersecting along divisors. Okay. So, we need to you know, get a grasp on this, and so in fact I want to devote most of my time today to just explaining how this works in the case of the ordinary one-dimensional pair of pants, because I think this is going to be more useful to you than going further at this point. So, and the first thing I need to tell you about is what is a Foucault category? Okay, and in fact, we're going to see a version called the wrapped Foucault category, which is relevant to this form of mirror symmetry. 
So this is something that was introduced by Abu Zaid and Seidel about 10 years ago. And the idea is something like this. So, okay, let's, you know, I'm just gonna work it out on an example right away. The example is the pair of pants. And I'm going to think of, so an object of the wrap fouquet category is a Lagrangian submanifold, which goes to infinity in a way that's reasonable. What does reasonable mean? Well, the manifolds we look at, they are basically Stein manifolds, which means they have a conical structure at infinity. And so there's a notion of conical Lagrangian submanifold at infinity. So that's something in this case, it's just something that goes to infinity straight in the cylindrical ends. Okay. A Lagrangian submanifold in general is a half dimensional submanifold in which the symplectic form vanishes. Think, for example, the real locus of a complex variety defined over real numbers. Um, in dimension one, every one dimensional submanifold is Lagrangian. Okay. So now, morphisms in usual Fouquet categories are defined just by intersections of Lagrangians. So by definition, the so-called Fleur complex of a pair of Lagrangians is the span, it's just some linear span with basis given by intersection points. Now, in the non-compact case, we don't like just thinking about intersections because unlike compact manifolds, there's not a good intersection theory at infinity. For other reasons that I don't want to get into, in fact, we want to mix things up with rape dynamics on the contact boundary at infinity. So the way one sets things up is before taking intersections, one perturbs Lagrangians by some Hamiltonian flow that wraps the cylindrical ends, and that's the reason for the name wrapped. So before I can talk about morphisms, let's talk about wrapping perturbations. So we have, no, take a smooth function, Hamiltonian, which is which has quadratic, or in general, superlinear growth at infinity. So what this means is in this next, there's a natural radial coordinate r, and here you want h to be something like r squared, or constant times r squared, okay? So now, a Hamiltonian function defines a Hamiltonian vector field, which basically moves things around its level sets, um, and for this kind of quadratic Hamiltonian function, the, what, what the flow does is it just pushes things around in the positive direction by increasing amounts as you go further and further out, okay? So the image of L under the flow of H, say the time one flow, would look like you, know, you start wrapping around the cylindrical end, say at a constant pace if you chose things to be quadratic. And so this is introducing a component of rape dynamics into the story. So now, having done such perturbations, the claim is there is a well-defined perturb perturbed intersection theory between Lagrangians with conical ends, which takes two Lagrangians, pushes one by this flow, and asks, where do the things intersect? Okay. So let me draw a better picture for future reference because we'll have some calculations to do. So, I'm going to emphasize the part of the pair of pants where my favorite Lagrangian goes. So let's call this L0. And then the time one image of L0 might do something 
like this. And so the definition in general is that homes between two Lagrangians uh, well, you know, let me just do it for L0 and itself, but in general you could have two different Lagrangians. This is the so-called wrapped Fleur complex, and this is generated by intersections of, so in general I take the first Lagrangian, take its time one image, intersect with the second one, and say, I take a vector space uh, whose basis is given by such intersections. Okay, so in general, well in this case, there's infinitely many intersections. Let's call these points x0, x1, x2, and so on here. x minus one, x minus two, and so on on that side. Okay, so this is a vector space, and I could do this for any pair of Lagrangians. So you can think of X0 as being actually corresponding to the topology of L0. You know, L0 is just contractible, its cohomology is dimension one, and this is the generator of the cohomology of L0 by itself. And these ones instead come from rape chords, trajectories of a rape flow that start from the end of L0 and come back to itself, going around once, twice, three times, and so on. Yes? So the Hamiltonian that I'm taking is growing quadratically both here and here, and I believe that I've drawn it in the correct way. Uh, yes. So see, you push in the positive, along the positive direction of the boundary in each puncture. And I believe that this is also the positive, the wrapping goes this way here and that way here. Yeah, I think so. Okay. So, okay, whoops. Okay, so now I have a category. I have morphisms. I, well, I have objects, I have morphisms. I need to talk about compositions. So in general, this is an A-infinity category, which means there's differentials, higher compositions, and so on. And composition is associated only up to homotopy. I will spare you the details because it's irrelevant for today. So instead, let's just talk directly about composition. So we need to talk about how to multiply, how to compose morphisms from L1 to L2, L2 to L3, to L1 to L3. And what this does is it counts holomorphic triangles with boundary on the time two image of L0, the time one, sorry, L1, the time one image of L2, and L3. So I want to look for pictures like this. More precisely, I want to count isolated solutions to a perturbed cauchy riemann equation. Uh, with boundary conditions on the time two image of L1, the time one image of L2, and L3. And so the inputs of my operations are going to be perturbed intersections of L1, L2, of L2, L3, and the output will be a perturbed intersection of L1, L3, which is kind of what I want, apart from issues about time one versus time two. So there's a very clever trick due to Abu Zaid and Seidel to understand what this time rescaling is about. The short version is, say that I had instead wrapped by time two. Well, what would be the difference? It would just turn around faster, and so the intersections would come closer together. But there's a natural correspondence between the two. There's a rescaling operation. So, concretely, what do I need to do, say, to calculate this for L0 here? Well, I need the time two image of L0, which is something that moves twice as fast. So, the intersections come about twice as often. Okay, this is phi 
squared of L0. And then I need, given a pair of intersections oops, between, so I said phi squared and phi1. So let's take this one, x1, and one between phi1 of L0 and L0, let's say this one at x0, I need to look for a triangle on this. Well, there's one here. Is it holomorphic? The answer is yes by the Riemann mapping theorem. Any picture like that on a Riemann surface is the image of a holomorphic map in a unique way up to reparameterization. So this is a picture proof that the composition of x1 and x0 is, well, what's the third corner? It's this intersection here, which was not labeled before, but that's because we're now looking at the intersection of L0 with a time two image. If we re-expand things to match time two flows with time one flows, this, this will scale back to this one. This corresponds to something I should call x1 as well. Sorry, the details were probably not completely clear, but hopefully I've conveyed that there's a recipe for computing these things. Okay, so now, if we were on a cylinder, let's temporarily scale back our ambitions. Okay, and we were computing the wrap fouquet category of a cylinder. I should probably have said first what's the mirror to the cylinder. Then you would find that for any, you know, the picture would be the same, just without this pesky puncture here. And so you would just look for triangles and you would find that no matter which pair of intersections you choose, there's a unique triangle connecting them. This is just basic plane geometry. So we would find that, okay, so the Rappler complex of L0 is spanned by generators xi indexed by integers, and xi times xj is xi plus j. So what this tells you is in the cylinder, the wrapped Fleur cohomology of this arc L0 with itself as a ring using the composition product looks like Laurent polynomials. And the identification is just, well, the generator I called x sub i, I will now call instead x to the i, and this calculation tells me this is a valid thing to do. So why is this, you know, the beginning of mirror symmetry? Well, if you're an algebraic geometer, you can ask, hey, if I have a ring, a ring is a space, right? Spec of that ring. And what's the ring, you know, what is, the ring of Laurent polynomials, the ring of functions of, the answer is it's basically the ring of functions of something that algebraic geometers like to call GM, and I will just call that C star. Okay, using, of course, algebraic geometry, not analytic. Otherwise, you would need to complete various things. So this is, in fact, the very first case of homological mirror symmetry in this talk. Uh, you can use this to conclude that homological mirror symmetry holds for the cylinder in the sense that the wrapped Fouquet category of the cylinder is equivalent to a category of perfect modules over the ring of Laurent polynomials in one variable, which is the same thing as the derived category of coherent sheaves of C star. And so this is homological mirror symmetry. So now, returning to the cylinder, we're supposed to get, a, sorry, to the pair of pants, we're supposed to have a slightly more interesting answer, uh, in part because, well, I've erased the 
statement for what the mirror is, but it was meant to be C cubed with, with the union of the coordinate hyperplanes in C cubed in a certain way. So returning to the pair of pants, well, the calculation is very similar. The only difference is when I said every pair of points bounds a triangle, this is no longer true of those triangular regions that pass through the puncture. That's the only difference. So in fact, you find that, you know, again, looking at this guy, you find that xi times xj is, well, still xi plus j if i and j have the same sign. Basically, if both inputs are on the same side of the middle puncture. In general, ij greater or equal to zero. And on the other hand, if the two inputs are on either side, then the unique triangular region you would see on the cylinder passes through the puncture at minus one, and then you would actually get zero as the output. So what you find is well the product of x1 with x minus 1 is now 0 you should probably not call them x and x inverse that seems like bad taste so instead let's give them two different names and we we find that this looks like a ring of polynomials in two variables x and y mod the relation xy equals 0 using the labeling that xi becomes x to the i and x minus i becomes y to the i. Okay, and now you, know, you summon the inner algebraic geometer and you ask, well, what is this the ring of functions on? The answer is just there. This is the space defined by xy equals zero inside c squared, the union of the two coordinate axes. Okay. So now, you cannot quite conclude immediately from this that the wrap Foucault category of the pair of pants is equivalent to coherent sheaves on this space because neither category is generated in finite time by L0 or by the structure sheaf. There's more interesting objects to look at. So what you would need to do is also compute the wrap fleur cohomologies of, say, this arc and that arc on the pair of pants. And similarly, on this singular space xy equals zero, you would need to look not just at the whole structure sheaf, if you want the trivial line bundle, but also at the structure sheaves of the two components, A and B, separately. So in fact, the statement is so L0, L1, and L2. Let's call them that way. So it is true that the wrapped Fouquet category of a pair of pants is equivalent to the derived category of coherent sheaves of say, this space xy equals zero. And the correspondence between objects under this equivalence is that L0 corresponds to the structure sheaf, L1 corresponds to the structure sheaf of one component, say O sub A, included into this. So this is, you know, for people who are into vector bundles, this is like you take the trivial vector bundle over A, but nothing over B. And L2 corresponds to O sub B. And you can check that all the calculations match between these, yes? Yes, that's a very good question. 
the pair of pants looks symmetric, this doesn't look symmetric. And this is not an accident, and there's, that's, that's part of why the first answer I told you for what's the mirror of a pair of pants was not this. Okay, so the statement is, this is not a completely satisfactory treatment because this puncture is not a first class citizen compared to those two. And the reason is if you look at the endomorphisms of these things, so here we said we get something that looks like a ring C of XY mod XY, which matches with functions on O. Okay? Now by symmetry, you expect endomorphisms of X of L1 to look like something similar, but I will give a different name to one of the variables. And now the observation is that the X group of, sorry, let me use the overboard for that because I want to do something here. So the thing to note here is that if I look at X of OA with itself, well, homes from OA to itself, sheaf homomorphisms, correspond basically to functions on A, which I've drawn as the x-axis. So let's say there's polynomials in X. But there's also a non-trivial element of X2, So there's the homes are C bracket X, but there's also an element Z in X2 of OA with itself. That's a calculation you have to do. And it looks now like, again, the same kind of polynomial ring mod product of variables equals zero, except Z is a degree two X. And if you track down gradings on the Fouquet category, the same thing happens here. There's, there's been a breaking in the symmetry in the Z gradings. Um, and so that's the reason why this doesn't look good. So the more symmetric answer is in fact, well, I've erased it long ago now, but the statement was we were supposed to look at DB Singh, this all of triangulated category of singularities of a landau ginzburg model and the mirror of a pair of pants was C cubed with a product of the coordinates. So we were supposed to look, in fact, at the hypersurface defined by the product, sorry, I call them Z1, Z2, Z3, I think, equals zero in C cubed, so the union of the three coordinate hyperplanes, but quotient by the structure sheaf, or by any, of, any other thing that looks like a vector bundle. And there is indeed an equivalence between coherent sheaves on this curve and Singularity is on this surface, which is a result of Orloff. It's in some sense a baby case of periodicity in singularity theory. The statement that if you take a one-dimensional singularity and you add a couple of quadratic terms on the product with C squared, then you get an equivalent singularity in dimension three. That's just been stabilized by adding quadratic terms. And so, Under this equivalence, these three sheaves correspond to the classes in the quotient category of the structure sheaves of the various components. And now you have a complete symmetry between the three punctures as opposed to that one. So another little tidbit here is this category has an ungraded auto-equivalence which permutes these three objects. Uh, which you would never probably see if you think of it this way, but is obvious on this one. Okay, so now, oops. I did want to go to some, to state a conjecture, and the observation here is, see, we have two incarnations to the mirror of a pair of pants, okay? And I want to play on that. So my claim is the way in which I've computed this thing for the pair of pants was to think of it as a punctured cylinder that's apparent from the way I set up the calculation. So in general, I can ask, what can I say about the complement of something in C star to the N? And so the observation here is the pair of pants in dimension N minus one, sorry, in dimension N is isomorphic to the complement 
of a pair of pants in dimension n minus one. Okay, um, because well, this one is again one plus x one plus dot 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 plus x n equals zero, and this one is one plus x one plus dot 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 plus x n plus x n plus one equals zero. And the answer is I can solve this for x n plus one non-zero if and only if that guy was not zero. So that was any point of C star to the n except those that were on the lower dimensional pair of pants. And so in fact there's, so the proposal, and this is like purely conjectural, is that the complement of H should be mirror to this singular space Z inside Y that was the union of all the toric divisors. Okay, so remember, and now, so remember what was the statement here? We said that H was mirror to, the Wright category of H was mirror to DB sing, which was by definition the quotient of coherent sheaves on Z by perfect complexes. So this is a quotient category, uh, which means there's this category of coherent sheaves of Z, which in the usual interpretation of homogeneous symmetry does not really have an interpretation on the other side. And so what we want to do is in fact provide such an interpretation and to what it means to take the quotient by perfect complexes. Okay, so the conjecture I want to state is something like this. So there exists something called a restriction functor from the wrapped category of a complement of a hypersurface in C star to the N to the wrapped category of the hypersurface itself. How is this defined? Well, I don't have time to give you the full details. So the rough version is just, this has Lagrangians in the complement of H with conical ends everywhere where this is non-compact, including near H. And as it approaches H, it should be conical in something that's like a cylinder times H, because the normal bundle to H is trivialized by F. And so this singles out the ends of a Lagrangian that approach H to give you a Lagrangian in H. Okay? So this is the ends along H, if you want, of a Lagrangian in the complement. So now, mirror symmetry should give you an equivalence between this and the derived category of coherent sheaves of this space Z. So remember in the case of the pants, this was supposed to be the union of coordinate hyperplanes in affine space. And now there's a natural quotient functor to db sing, which is just by definition, you kill using homological algebra all vector bundles. In this case, since this is a fine, you just kill the structure sheaf. And now, this is another instance of homological mirror symmetry for H itself. And the claim is there should be a commutative diagram like this, which enriches homological mirror symmetry to bring in the complements. So, I'm out of time, so I will just say, finally, that there's actually an even bigger picture of this, because Z is a union of various components, right? In this case, the hyperplanes. And there's natural inclusion functors from the derived categories of each component into this. The, these components themselves, they're toric varieties. We know mirror symmetry for those. Turns out mirror symmetry tells you, by Abu Zaid's thesis, you should be looking at a Foucault-Seidel category of Lagrangians in C star to the N with boundary on H, in a certain sense. And this one has a natural inclusion functor into that one, which basically replaces the boundary by a puncture and changes the treatment of boundary perturbations. And so that one should correspond also to the inclusion functor, and there's a bunch of properties of this diagram which I don't have space or time to tell you about. 
Of course, this is all conjectural. The only case you can check explicitly from these computations is thinking of a one-dimensional pair of pants as the complement of a zero-dimensional pair of pants, also known as a point, inside C star. But you can try to use it also to get a grasp on the variable category of a two-dimensional pair of pants by lifting this from the one-dimensional pair of pants where it's known. And in principle, by induction, you should be able to actually access the variable categories of pairs of pants, and from then, you know, maybe many more examples. Okay, thank you. Is the restriction functor surjective? Yes, because there's an adjoint functor actually, which is an inclusion, which basically takes a Lagrangian in H and transport it. You know, you should think of this complement by the projection F. You have a projection. Think of F as a vibration from C star to the N to C, and all you do when you delete H is you delete, you puncture C. So if I have now a Lagrangian in H. I can just transport it over an arc from the origin to infinity, and that gives me an object of a variable category of a complement whose restriction is what I started with. So this has a right inverse, which tells you basically how to build a section here. This section is not canonical. It depends on the choice of a component of Z, or if you want a normalization of F. Oh, yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, it could have been anything. There's a similar version. Um, you know, the conjecture should work in all cases. I can show you another example to work out is the local PN, where the hypersurface is 1 plus x1 plus x dot plus xn plus t over the product of the xi is equal to 0. So that mer the mirror then is the anti-canonical anti bundle over Pn. And you can check in that case, you know, with, uh, again, the only case that's rigorously proved is dimension one, but uh, you can, you know, hand wave around, yeah, it, it seems to work. And, I mean, in general, there's many structural features. For example, you can compute homes in this by taking two periodic resolutions of sheaves by perfect, you know, infinite perfect complexes that are eventually two periodic and taking x to a very large degree. And similarly, this functor has an adjoint which lets you compute homes here by a limit of localization along a natural transformation of degree two in here that kind of mimics that calculation. So there's a lot of structural features, you know, let's say this seems to make sense. So I'm pretty confident. I don't know how to prove it, but I'm confident. <laughs> 